Hi Messy Queens, welcome to a, another reading vlog. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we are going to be starting another reading challenge weekly vlog. the last time that I did a reading 100 pages every day for a week reading vlog. I think what I'm going to do this time because I found that reading 100 pages was relatively easy to do and often I was reading much much more than 100 pages each day. So for this challenge vlog I'm going to be reading 150 pages each day. If you like this video please be sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more let's talk about what I want to read this week. So as always, this is a tentative TBR, okay? Because things may change. I'll talk about what I'm currently reading. So I started A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer um, last week. I am currently on chapter 17, so I'm 138 pages into this book. I don't know how much I'm enjoying this. I'm reading along with the audiobook, and I don't know if it's just because Akatar ruined me for any story that's even remotely similar, but I think that that's what's happening. This book is about a curse. That's very dark and lonely. No, this book is about our male lead is cursed to repeat the same autumn of his 18th year over and over and over again. And his name is Prince Wren of Emberfall. And he's under the impression that if he gets a girl to fall in love with him, it will break the curse. But that was before he turned into a vicious beast and destroyed his castle, his family, and every last shred of hope. Then our female lead, her name is Harper, and I love her. Nothing has ever been easy for Harper. With her father long gone, her mother is dying of cancer, and her brother is constantly underestimating her because of her cerebral palsy. When she tries to save a stranger on the streets of Washington, D.C., she is kidnapped and pulled into this magical world where she meets Prince Wren. I'm really, really loving Harper. I love her so much. She's such a badass. And I really, really love the representation of cerebral palsy in this story. I love how it was presented. I love how Harper, I mean, again, she is just such a badass queen. I'm obsessed with her. And everyone keeps like underestimating her and asking if she's injured and like just being annoying. And she just doesn't put up with their crap. I also really, really liked the explanation of what cerebral palsy is. What I'm struggling with at this point in time with the book is Prince Wren. I don't love him. He's really just giving tampon from Akatar and I hate it. I'm going to continue with it for now. I might try to get to, I mean, I'm already pretty far in actually. I'm gonna try to get to page 200 and if I'm still not super invested in the story, I'm probably gonna call it quits. Okay, bestie queens, I've listened to 30 more pages of A Curse of Dark and Lonely and I need to stop listening to this. I'm so bored. I'm so confused because there's no like mystery, there's no plot twists. I'm really bored and rather than just shitting on this book, I'm just gonna stop reading it because I can't even. So far today I've read 30 pages, but I also had the idea that I think I'm gonna make a journal spread for this reading challenge. So that way it's just really easy and I can track how many pages that I'm reading each day, whether I'm hitting my 150 or if I'm going above. And also, JMO wanted to say hi. Talk soon. friends. I hit my reading goal last night and I'm also loving my freaking book. Yesterday I read 182 pages. Last night I read up to page 152 in The Depths by Nicola Spread. I couldn't stop reading this last night. The descriptions are so 
lush. It is very much YA horror. Like nothing graphic or gross or grotesque or anything like that happens in this book. The ghosties and how they're interacting with the ghosties and then also all of the really peculiar things that are happening on the island. It just has you so intrigued that you want to know more. And there are a fair amount of cliffhangers in the book. So like at the end of a chapter, you get a cliffhanger and you want to read just start the next chapter right away if i wanted to read close to 200 pages today i could finish this which is very exciting because i want to know what happens but also i don't want this to be over i'm gonna need to read more from nicola sprantz i'm dying i haven't read too much more i've read well i guess another like 45 pages i'm on chapter 27 now i can't stop like I am obsessed with this book I love it so much also I love Billy I think he is just the absolute cutest Sean is mad sketch he's super sus I don't trust him I can't wait to find out like what's going on with him and then our two little ghosty girlies in this book so creepy like so stinking creepy but also you like feel for them because you learn about their backstory and what happened to them and kind of like why they're acting the way that they are now and it just makes you very empathetic towards their situation but also like their creepy af i feel like i sit down to read this book for like an hour and i end up reading so much of it very very immersive like i feel like i've said that i know i've said that already but seriously, like the descriptions of this island, the smells that she's describing, the moisture in the air and how like humid and suffocating it is. And it smells like saccharine sweet with, um, with all the flowers. And she talks about how our main character talks about how when she's walking through the really jungly parts of the island, the leaves are hitting her and it feels like she's getting licked. And it's just like so gross. But the descriptions are so good that it makes you feel like you are in this story. It's so incredible. It's very, very fast paced. There's something that's happening in like every single chapter. Like there's never not something going on. Good morning, my friends. Happy Tuesday. I'm so mad at myself. I read 144 pages yesterday. Why I couldn't just finish six more pages, I don't know. I was trying to read as much as I could of the depths last night, but I was really, really tired and I was trying to do math when I was sleepy, which is never a good idea. Wait. Don't do it. I'm currently on chapter 42. I only have about 40 pages left. So I'm absolutely gonna finish this this morning. I'm currently watching Olivia Reads a Latte, her most recent weekly reading vlog because I love her vlogs. They're so like relaxing and comfy. Then we'll figure out what we wanna pick up next. I'm thinking I want to pick up The Island of Dr. Moreau because it's only 90 pages. And then the other book that I really want to return to is called The Exorcist's House by Nick Roberts, I think. It's the book that I'm reading on my Kindle. It got so juicy so fast. Let me just confirm. Whoa, I got that right. I will talk to you after I finish this book and I'm going to hit my 150 pages today. I'm so mad at myself that I didn't do it yesterday. Okay, I took a quick reading break because I needed to get some McDonald's breakfast. You cannot convince me that McDonald's doesn't have the best breakfast. Their hash browns are life-changing. Like my entire day gets better when I have a McDonald's hash brown. And also I need to just shout out to Kami from Burrows and Books because she is my McDanks Diet Coke sister in crime. Obsessed.
Okay, so we're going off script. I had to pick up an audiobook today because I needed to clean my house. Like, it was so gross. I was gone for a week, hadn't really... I had cleaned before we left, but like, when you have a dog, things just get dusty and hairy really, really fast. I decided to pick up Dead Voices by Katherine Arden. I'm now 72% of the way through this book, but it was a short audiobook. It was only five hours and I've been listening to it on two times speeds. But I was very intrigued because I love the Winter Night Trilogy by Katherine Arden. I've only read the first one so far, but I didn't realize that Katherine Arden writes middle grade and middle grade spooky stories. Like, absolutely. It's a group of kids. They're going on a ski trip with their parents and they're going to this newly renovated ski lodge that used to be an orphanage. Now, the orphanage had kind of a bad reputation. Um, some creepy things were going on. So it shut down for a really, really long time. And then the new owners bought it, renovated it, turned it into a ski lodge. Well, while they're driving up, it is a crazy, crazy snowstorm. So they get to the ski lodge and the power goes out. The parents are like cutting wood, making sure that they have enough food and supplies and hot water and keeping the fire going and all that stuff and meanwhile the kids start running into some ghosties so it's very fun i will say it took a little while to get to the main in my opinion like the main bot story and this book is only 250 pages so really by like the 40 to 45 percent mark is when you really start to get into the meat and potatoes of the plot and the story and the spookiness so it's probably a three star. I've been having fun with it and it's very, very easy to listen to and because it's a middle grade, it's really just like spooky vibes and it's not anything that's actually gonna be like scary. You know what I mean? such a great morning. I'm drinking coffee out of my new mug, which I absolutely am obsessed with. I was watching Jordaline's new reading vlog earlier this morning, which I love her so much. And I've been ordering my bullet journal supplies for my 2023 reading journal, which I'm so excited. It has been an incredible morning, safe to say. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to do a bullet journal supply haul video with all the supplies that I ended up purchasing for my 2023 reading journal. That will be coming most likely in December at some point. And then reading updates. So yesterday I was nowhere close to hitting my page goal for the day. I ended up reading 69 pages. I read 11 more pages from The Island of Dr. Moreau, and I'm really, really enjoying this book. So I knew going into it that it was going to be a very fast-paced story, but essentially Mr. Prendick is now on Dr. Moreau's island. He has kind of recognized Dr. Moreau as a scientist biologist person who actually got like exiled from england he's originally from england because he was doing crazy things with his scientific experiments and he was exposed and then there was this pamphlet published about him that was just like absolutely trashing his name so he decided to flee from england to this extremely isolated island. So Mr. Prendick has kind of connected those dots. Dr. Moreau and his like assistant Montgomery are still being extremely evasive about like what's going on. I will say this book has big trigger warnings for animal cruelty. Like nothing super gruesome has happened yet. I have a feeling it might get a little bit more intense the farther I get into the book. I read 58 pages last night of The Exorcist's House. Y'all, 
I am living for this book. If you are looking for something super scary and you enjoy possession, demonic, exorcist stories, please read The Exorcist House by Nick Roberts. This book went from zero to scary in 0.2 seconds. There is very little suspense. It kind of just like hits you all at once. Like it just gets into the scary moments so quickly that there's not suspense. In one chapter, you will be so scared. I want to cover my eyes, but I can't because I'm reading. It is so scary. So essentially, there's this demonic creature that crawls out from this well that was dug really, really long ago in the basement of this home. There was a seance that was done in this basement that allowed the evil to basically take ownership of the house. So very similar to The Conjuring. If you liked the movie The Conjuring, you will love this book. This new family has now moved into the home and they're finding out all the history of the exorcist who used to live in the home. So I will check in a little bit later with some updates. Okay friends, I am in the middle of reading The Exorcist House and I'm listening to an ASMR room, which is so vibey. Just look at this. I might have used this on one of my reading sprints one time, but I love this one. I'm officially 60% of the way through this book, but I wanted to just read this one part. Like, there has been some really gruesome things that have happened at this point with the demon. Like, this thing is just super strong, and it is fucking people up. Like, it is on a rampage, basically. And everyone at this point in the story is starting to, like, act really weird. Like, they're all being affected by this force but it's difficult for them to remember like what happened to them like if something happened and they were possessed or like saw something after like 24 hours they can't even remember like what happened to them it is so creepy but anyways i just wanted to read this little part to you because i feel like this is a part this is like two sentences that even though nothing like super scary is happening it's actually like so freaking scary so nora is the mother and wife of this new family that's living in this home and she goes down into the basement because daniel is now like obsessed with being in the basement her husband so she goes down there and it says out of nowhere she felt like she was being watched she looked into the dark cracks surrounding the small door there was something there that she couldn't quite see it was a maroon round shape floating in the black void the longer she stared at it the more she realized that it was a face and then it blinked i'm sorry if i was like just imagine that you're in like this dark creepy basement and it's completely dark you can't really see too much and then you think you see something so you're staring at it and you're like what is that and then all of a sudden it blinks at you i would pee my pants i would literally pee my pants and then keel over and die of my heart stopping like that just sounds so scary so even the moments that aren't like you know like violence and like bloody and gory and crazy it's still really really just creepy like just so so creepy that's where i'm at i wanted to read you guys that so that you could get a little taste of like what's going on in this book but i can't believe how much i'm loving this book i want to say that this is a five star at this moment in time but we'll see how it ends happy friday quick recap of what i ended up reading yesterday so i finished the Exorcist's house and I gave it 4.5 stars. I really kept going back and forth between whether or not I wanted to rate it 4.5 or an absolute five stars. And I don't know that it like hit that five star metric or not. It's more of an emotional attachment, you know what I mean? But the writing was so incredible. The climactic point of that plot was insane. It did not disappoint in any aspect and then the ending is one of those very open-ended like spooky endings so overall very incredible very very scary as well so i thoroughly enjoyed that book that was 118 pages so i still needed to read another like 40 pages or so so i started to read sorcery of thorns last night i got 42 pages into it so i'm on chapter five i was already going into this book with very high expectations because i love margaret rogerson's writing ever since i read an enchantment of ravens i was like give me more of this writing 
But I was surprised at how creepy this book is compared to An Enchantment of Ravens. Like this has a completely different mood than An Enchantment of Ravens did. This is still a YA fantasy, but where An Enchantment of Ravens was much more, I don't know, like focused on love. Like it was very clearly a YA romance right from the beginning. In this book, we follow Elizabeth and she is an orphan. Rather than being sent to an orphanage, she was dropped off at one of the libraries that are in this society. And these libraries are actually, I would almost describe them as dangerous, castly dungeons where they need to lock away these evil demonic grimoires so that these grimoires don't almost become like human. Like these grimoires are very sentient and they're evil sentient beings. It's very dark. It's very like a dark library aesthetic. Much more creepy spooky vibes than An Enchantment of Ravens. An Enchantment of Ravens was much more lighthearted, cute, the perfect like YA autumnal fantasy romance, whereas this is a really good like October spooky read. So I'm gonna stop saying spooky now. I read 42 pages of this, obviously really, really enjoying it, but today I just haven't had a lot of motivation to read. But I think what I'm gonna do is read Lore Olympus by Rachel Smythe. This is a book I've been meaning to get to for so, so long. So many of you, when I really started talking about how obsessed I am with Hades and Persephone, were like, you need to read Lore Olympus. It is so stinking good. And this book you can find for free on Webtoons, but when I was at Target one day, they were having this big, big sale on all of their graphic novels and mangas and stuff like that. So this was like 30% off and I was like, I'm just gonna get it because I love Hades and Persephone and I'm really excited to read this book. So I think what I'm gonna do is read this today and I don't know how many pages it is. Okay, so this book is 384 pages according to Goodreads. I'm gonna put on an ASMR room and JMO is snuggling on the bed with me. Look at this little snuggly poo. I wanted to do a quick check-in from Friday and I also think that I'm going to end the vlog here. So yesterday I ended up reading and finishing Lore Olympus by Rachel Smythe and I really really loved this. Right after I finished I don't have volume two so I actually went to webtoons and just started reading um, from where this book left off and I'm really really loving it. I gave this book four stars. I really like the Hades and Persephone in this book. One thing I think is really interesting about the art style is that each of the characters like their faces change quite significantly in each of the little like artwork squares but you know the characters by like what color they are. I thought that that was really nice and then also I like how all of the different gods and goddesses are really represented in this series where at first I thought that it was really going to be centralized on just Hades and Persephone and we weren't going to see like any other characters so really really enjoyed this so yesterday I read 356 pages because that's what this book it says that this book is on Goodreads I think that's pretty fair this challenge kind of burnt me out a little bit this week so that's why Today's Saturday, but I'm really not going to be reading anything today. And I think that Sunday through Friday, I did read quite a significant amount of pages. So I ended up finishing four books. I finished The Depths, Dead Voices, The Exorcist's House, and then Lore Olympus. So I feel very, very accomplished. And with that being said, I'm going to give my brain a little bit of a reading break because I don't want to push myself too hard and end up in a reading slump. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye friends.